Hi YouTube. You're gonna see a, um, a couple of different channels come out with videos like this with a similar theme. This is uh, this is a point that just has to be made, and uh, and I hope that the right people are listening to this. The ones that need to hear this the most. I really hope that they're that they get this message. Okay. Um, <clears throat> you know, one thing that. Uh, one thing that appeals to me about the Mercury Dime, yeah, I love the design, but it's what it represents. To me, it represents the fact that anybody, anybody can invest in silver. It's just a couple of dollars. I mean, next to copper, I think I think copper is the cheapest thing <laughs> with the pre-82 pennies, but. You know, ind industry doesn't use terms like uh, junk or gutter. You know, it's not junk silver. It's not the gutter metal. It's not gold's little brother. Industry doesn't view silver like that. Industry views silver as the best of breed, a vital component to their manufacturing process. And for the mere cost of $2, anybody can get in the game. Okay, that's what I love about silver. It is the... It is the metal of every person. You know, so, uh, um, when, I, when my channel first started, somebody tried to, to uh, disparage me by saying, you're just an average person, and, and most of your viewers are just average people, too. And I was like, yeah. I, I felt bad for him that he actually thought he was insulting me. I was like, absolutely. You know, it's me and a bunch of people in the fat part of the bell curve just trying to make sense of everything and, and trying to do well here. Absolutely. And, you know, when, when you talk to, um, when you do a channel like this, and a lot of people come to it that are new, and just kind of trying to get their financial act together, well, you run into situations where things get abused a little bit, okay? <clears throat> people take on extra leverage when they really shouldn't be. People go out and max out their credit cards on silver and gold. It's that gunslinger, that uh, that gambler's mentality. And look, I, I'm I'm guilty of, of that mentality too. Okay, I mean, there, you know, it's really hard to get away from. But these are destructive financial habits. You know, when uh, when I first heard about how well the uh, ultra high relief dragon did, the gold dragon, you know, what my first thought was. Should have bought two. Could have flipped one and, and paid for the majority of the first one. Well, wait a minute. If I'm going to buy two that I couldn't afford, why not buy five? Well, wait a minute. Why not dream big? Why don't I take out a 401k loan and buy 20? I mean, come on. <clears throat> yeah, I'm not immune. I'm not immune to it. Unfortunately, you know, we talk about silver and gold and, and one of the good things that we say about it is it scratches that itch it scratches that spending itch well there's, there's a dark side to that there's a downside to that right you didn't fix the problems it's just kind of you just kind of mask them and they're resurfacing somewhere else you didn't fix your spending problem now you're just spending it on silver and gold which isn't a huge problem I mean obviously you're, you're building wealth but when you're using credit to do it when you're spending tomorrow's dollars today to do it it's a problem if you ever pay a single dollar to the bank a single penny to the bank in interest for your silver and gold you're making a big mistake you know we always talk about living within your means not keeping up with the Joneses okay the very nature of silver and gold as a, as a savings vehicle or an investment, however you want to call it, is live within your means. Hopefully there's some money left over, and you can use a portion of that to put into silver and gold. You know, we always talk about uh, the keeping up with the Joneses, and your neighbor buys a new vehicle, so you have to buy a new vehicle. Your sister buys a nice house, so you've got to buy a new nice house. 
And that mentality will always keep you running on that hamster wheel and getting nowhere. Well, let's shift gears. You come to YouTube, and let me tell you, there's some pretty impressive metal buying going on on YouTube. Okay, some of the guys on here buys metal, met buy metals that just makes my head explode. Okay, and trying to keep up with them is just a, a, a tremendous mistake. First of all, some of these guys have been doing it for a long time. Some of the guys with the bigger stacks. Okay, and if you're new to the game. You know, trying to keep up with them is just a, a fool's errand. And secondly, yeah, a lot of a lot of people on here have more money than you, and they can afford to go out and spend this kind of money on metals. Well, your option shouldn't be to run out and access credit. Your you know you should be thinking in terms of how do I make more money to be able to do that, not how do I access lines of credit to do that. I mean, look. <clears throat> There's a lot of compulsive, addictive behavior that kind of goes with it. You know, man, it, it, it feels good to get that silver and gold in the mail, doesn't it? I mean, look, I, I go to Admax and I click on gold. As soon as I see that page, you know, I, I, my eyes light up. I could literally take, I could sell my home, I could cash out my 401k plan, and I could take every dollar I'll make for the rest of my life, and I could go crazy on that Admax site. And you know what? In a month... I'd want something else. I'd want more. That's just the very nature of it. It's in our DNA. I mean, man has value, put a value on this since the first time he found it. Okay, both silver and gold. It's in our DNA. But you've got to be smart about it. You know, you basically promise yourself you wouldn't try to keep up with the Joneses, and, and you're right, you know, you're not buying that new vehicle, but you just traded one bad financial habit for another by going to YouTube and trying to keep up with some of these guys with the big stacks. That's just a recipe for disaster. You know, silver and gold are volatile enough without paying interest on it. You also can't get caught up in thinking that the collapse is right around the corner. If that's your view, that the financial system is at risk, you can't run out and start leveraging yourself up now thinking that it, it's imminent. Because it's not. They've gotten really good at kicking the can. Okay, and I realize, you know, they can kick the can until they can't. But you're really... Uh, you're really setting yourself up for failure. Have you ever done this thing where um, you know you have a stock that goes up 10%? So what's the first thing that you think? I wish I had more. I wish I had half of my portfolio in that stock. Well, wait a minute. If I'm going to have half, I wish I had the full portfolio in that stock. No, I wish I had margin. You're just setting yourself up for failure. And I, I really hope that um, that before you use credit to purchase silver and gold, that you can pay it off at the end of the month. You've got to be disciplined with this, guys. You've got to be disciplined with it. Otherwise, you're just setting yourself up for failure. You haven't fixed anything in your life from a financial perspective. I mean, that's what we're really trying to do here, a lot of us, is we're trying to get our mind around financial discipline. You know, the very same thing that we rail against the government for is spending our children's future, right? Well, you're kind of doing the same thing. You're spending tomorrow's dollars today. So, like I said, I, I hope the right people that need to hear this get to watch this video, and uh, and I'll talk to you later.